Okay, okay mid. One final mid. fetch quest. Helena has recovered the material for the helm. She'll be along shortly. Excellent. Another job well done. And just one remaining. Right. Right. The shield in. This one's a bit of a bugger. How so? The plating's enough to stop the engines going pop, but those things will still be spitting out enough fire to set the rest of the ship ablaze. Which is why you need proper shielding. A prison for the dragon's breath that's blazing away inside. I thought a triple thick layer of tempered steel might do it. Or more of the stuff that the Fallen use, but they both be too heavy. The helm and the plating are bulky enough as it is. Add any more weight and the whole ship would be at the bottom of the briny before we'd even started. I need something light. But I've wrapped my brains and I just can't think what I'd do it. Well, if I were in need of obscure knowledge, I know whose counsel I would seek. Harpocrates. Tomes? Yeah, well, I'd thought of that, obviously. I've got <laughs> all the details written down here. Can you take this to him? See what he makes of it? Right uh, away. Right. Uh, things I'd do for you, mid. You're lucky you're Sid's daughter. It is interesting, this is the second time, at least that I know of, out of all the Final Fantasy games that I've played, it's only the second time that we've had, not Sid, but a relative of Sid. In Final Fantasy XV, we had Cindy, who was Sid's granddaughter, I think. Now we've got Mid, who's Sid's daughter. So really interesting that they decided to go with relatives of Sid these past two Final Fantasy games. I wonder if they've done that in any of the other Final Fantasies. Hippocrates, do you have a moment? For you, Clive? Always. Well, actually, it's for mid this time. Could you take a look at this? Oh, for her? Never. I never have time for her. In fact, go ahead and throw away that little thing there. I don't want to read it. Hmm. <laughs> Shielding for a mithril engine. Whatever will that girl think of next? What are these notes around the edges? She has some specific requirements for the materials. The shielding needs to be able to resist extreme heat on the inside, and yet remain cool enough on the outside not to set the ship alight, while also being light enough not to sink it. As you can imagine, she's struggling to find anything that meets her needs. I see. I wondered if you might know of a solution. Or if you might be able to search the records for one. Hmm. Perhaps it is not a different material she requires, but a different approach. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Consider the lake we have made our home. Its blighted waters eat away far more quickly than fresh water or even brine, at timber and steel alike. And yet, we have made a home here from those very materials nonetheless. We have. But Bardolf must varnish every board twice over to keep it from rotting. And Obelisk complains that without a constant supply of... <sighs> Pitch. I see. Early Gregorian histories speak of a preparation known as Moondew. It is said to be able to resist even the most ferocious flames. Okay. Before the dragoons tamed the worms and wyverns of the realm, nobles would daub their castle walls with it in order to guard against dragon fire. So if we could recreate it... It might be applied to some material or other in order to provide the protection mid requires. As to how best to apply it and to what material, perhaps Bardolf and Obelus might be of assistance. I shall speak to them and see what wisdom they might have to offer. Sweet. If you would be so kind as to procure the necessary ingredients, I shall discuss the specifics of how it might be most effectively put to use with our two friends. Sounds good. The knowledge of the past may yet prove useful to we of the modern era. Thank you, Harpocrates. And since you're asking others to help you, perhaps I should too. So you need a hand, do you? We do. I'll be heading to market for the ingredients we need. I could do with some help. And some company, too. <laughs> the other 
can assist me in researching how best to prepare the shielding itself. Can we count on your aid? Always. Well, if Jill's game... Thank you. I am sure either of these fine young minds would prove indispensable in my research. I leave the decision as to who will go with whom in your capable hands, Clive. Well, I mean, is there any question? Shielding that guards against even the most ferocious flames. We could have done with some of that on Drustinus. That's true. I doubt I would have survived that place with or without it. A trip to Northreach, though, I think either of us could handle. <laughs> All right, but anyways. So, Clive, have you made your decision? Who will accompany you on your little excursion? As interesting as it would be to see what an excursion with Taria is, I mean, it's got to be Jill. Very well. Get some so, alone time. What do we need to find? I have taken the liberty of preparing a list. Here. White chocobo eggs. Pepio nuts. Are you sure this list is right? Everything on here seems very edible. I would have thought the ingredients would be a little more exotic. Though these items may seem mundane, they have potent effects that are rarely exploited. Effects for which they were once highly prized. So much so, in fact, that they were harvested almost to extinction, hence Moondews having fallen from favor. Mm. Now, of course, they can be obtained with ease. You should be able to find everything you need at the market in Northreach. Excellent. Is that so? I've been meaning to visit Northreach anyway. I'll set out now. Join me there when you're ready. I will. Until then. You two enjoy yourselves. Oh, we will. You too, Talia. Are those Pepio nuts? You can never tell. <laughs> How goes the hunt for ingredients? Uh, I've only just started. I'm sure everything we need is somewhere amongst all these stalls, though. Why don't we split up and see? We'll take a couple of ingredients each. All right. What am I looking for? How about you look for the Pepio nuts and some garlic? I'll find the other things we need. We can meet by the gate when we're finished. Sounds good. Hey, you. You haven't much, but you're free to look. Give me some garlic. I hope it's to your liking. Can I sell anything? Yes, I can. Sweet. Good day. Good day to you. Hey, you. Buy, sell, or be gone. Give me some Pepio nuts. Thanks for nothing. That's everything. Let's see how Jill's getting on. I think I really just say thanks for nothing. What an asshole. Did you find everything? I did. Here. And confirm. Now, uh, Jill, do you want to take a walk? Garlic and pepio nuts. Perfect. Now, all that remains is for Harpocrates to somehow turn all this into what Mid needs to keep her engine cool. But before we head back, would you walk with me a while? Yes. Thank you for asking me to help you today. It makes a nice change. It does. It's good to get away from all the battle and bloodshed for once. Just being here. Reminds me of when we were children. Do you remember walking down Market Street in Rosalith, taking in the sights and smells? <laughs> how could I forget? What with Torgal's antics. <laughs> remember how his nose would prick up at the scent of sausages? He'd go racing away and we'd have to go running after him. <laughs> we wouldn't catch you now, would we, boy? I wanted to see that. Was there anything you wanted to buy for yourself while we're here? Something I can buy there for you? was, yes. Some jewelry? Well, sort of. Molly in the kitchens told me about a place that sells particularly good pies. Thought you might like to share one with me. Yes. Thank you. And I saw some bread. Big white cobs like the baker back in Rosalith used to make. What do you think? I thought we might get some soup to dip it in. 
But then I tried a slice of the butcher's dry cured ham, and it was just. Oh. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Sorry. It's just. Oh, you're right. I really do feel like a child again being here with you. Well, we're not children anymore, are we? Clive. Is it wrong of me to enjoy this? No, Jill. This is how life should be. And it's how our lives will be when our work is finally done. When we can live on our own terms. I hope so. Thank you, Clive. He's sweet. But Clive, I noticed you still didn't make a move. Did you at least hold her hand? Well, I suppose we better be getting back. I need to give these ingredients to Hippocrates and Taya. I'll see you at the hideaway. Take care. I will. You too. Uh, could you imagine you come out here with Taria and she's just like, hey, you want to go like hop in bed somewhere nearby? Just like, wait, what? I wonder how Hippocrates is getting on with the moon dew. Hopefully he's done by now. All right. Give it to me, Harpocrates. How's work on the shielding progressing, Harpocrates? Well, very well indeed. And thanks in no small part to your kind assistance. I was just explaining to Taya how we might best go about preparing the moon dew. And now that we have all the ingredients, we may begin. You Excellent. can count on me. I've mixed more than a few mysterious concoctions in my time. Fair point. <laughs> I'm sure you have. What about the shielding itself? Work is underway, under the watchful eyes of Bardolf and Obelus. Apparently, it'll be ready soon. Thank you. All of you. Right then. Jill, would you join me in the infirmary? Many hands make light work and all that. Of course. Oh, and Clive, thank you. <laughs> it was nice just being with you. Yeah, I wish that would happen more often. It appears our work here is almost at an end. A shame. I was enjoying playing the man of action for once. <laughs> when both the shielding and the moon dew are ready, it will merely be a matter of applying the one to the other. All right, Followed sweet. By a rigorous process of testing and retesting, of course. Obviously. Perhaps someone ought to warn young mid of that. Leave it to me. Thank you, Hippocrates. And what's complete? Letting off steam part three. Very nice. Well, I better go and give Mid the good news then. Okay, Mid, it's all done. You're gonna go visit your father's grave now. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mid. But you'll be pleased to know that work on the shielding is underway. You found something for it. In a manner of speaking, Hippocrates knew of a substance that's highly resistant to heat. A coating that should provide the protection you need. He's supervising the construction and testing of the shielding as we speak. Brilliant! I knew you wouldn't let me down. Don't thank me. I'm just the errand boy. Right then. Better start working out how to bolt all these bits together. To the Black Hammer! <sighs> you know, when I got into the smithing game, I thought I'd be making swords and shields, not thermal bleeding didgeridoo dars. <laughs> Displacement stacks. Same difference. Whatever you call it, I ain't putting it together in here. It's cramped enough as it is. Let's take this outside. Mid, you get all the parts lined up on the deck. I'll take care of the rest. On my way! Oh, and bring me the biggest salmon you can find. 
This is gonna require some precision wallabing. <laughs> so excited, even though her face didn't really show it there. And those are the sounds of something being built. Sometime later. There it is. It's finished. It's finally finished. Thank fuck for that. I'll be feeling my hammer arm for weeks. Thank you, Clive, Blackthorn, everyone. Good job, Blackthorn. That's one down and just three more to go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, oh did my I tell God. You? The Enterprise has four mithril engines, and we'll be needing a displacement stack for each. Oh, you don't Lord. mean... <laughs> don't worry. Now they've got a finished one to work off, my gang in Canva can build the rest. Good luck to them, I say. Right, I'm off to get a sling for this elbow. Any other work comes in, keep it to yourselves, eh? Hmm. <laughs> well, what if I needed another sword, Blackthorn? All right, now, Mid. Let's go see your dad. What's the matter? Nothing. Just daydreaming. Thinking about the Enterprise sailing off over the horizon to shores unknown. Searching for a land untouched by the blight. Just like me and my dad planned. So if the worst came to the worst and every scrap of soil in the twins turned black... We might still have a chance. That's what she was meant to be. You see, one last chance just in case we needed it. But now she's so close to being finished, I've realized I don't want her to be that. I don't want her to be just a lifeboat for us to cling to if things get desperate. I want... I want people to sail a border by choice, not from the lack of it. In a world where we're not just trying to survive, but... Where we can actually live. Why don't you should mention that? I'm working on that. And I'll do everything I can to get you what you want. <laughs> don't you always? All right. My mind's made up. As soon as the Enterprise is fit to sail, I'm putting her under your command. Sod our plans. I'm trusting in yours. Are you sure about this? Something tells me it's what my dad would have wanted. He'd be proud of you. You, um, you were going to visit his grave, weren't you? Yes, I was. And you can come too, now that your little project is finished. Right. There's just one thing I need to finish up first. Won't be a mo. <sighs> All right. I'll let Otto know you're coming. Meet us in the mess when you're ready. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, interesting. So we've got two more, it's like addition quests of some sort. What is this missive? All right. Oh, interesting. So we've got side quests. Off the record from Goat. I was thumbing through the hideaway ledgers at Otto's behest and might have come across something that might need your attention. Maybe. And by that I mean immediately. I know where I be. Trouble with the ledgers. Shouldn't he be asking Otto for help? Payback. Hey, Alright, we got some more in here. A bad feeling. From Karen. Oh, great. Clive, something ain't right with that hand of yours. But it pleases your lordship. Come pay me a visit at the toll. Karen. What could be wrong with Torgor? He seen well enough when I last saw him. Poor pupper. Bone to pick. I'll help you out, bud. Don't you worry. And one more. About Blackthorn. From, oh, I'll, the pen is mightier. What is that? Oh, open ten letters. Sweet. I don't even remember what his voice sounded like. I'll just go for something. Cheers for your help dragging Blackthorn out of the dumps the other day. Thing is, I reckon he's gone and thrown himself back in. 
judging by the droop of his jowls lately. So I'm thinking, maybe it weren't just the leather that was on his mind. Maybe there's other demons jabbing the pitchforks into his privates. That's quite the visual. I know you're a busy bloke, but next time you find yourself free, maybe we can go and ask the old bastard what's got him so hot and bothered. Simulate so just the forge. August. Hopefully it's nothing. But I should speak to Blackthorn just in case. Indeed. Blacksmith's Blues number two. I'm guessing that's going to add more things to build, which is amazing. What's wrong, Blackthorn? Blackthorn, do you have a moment? Not really, no. <laughs> this won't take long. I just wanted to ask how you're getting on. August was worried about you, that you might still be doubting your craft, even after learning the trick of that cuirass. Is there something else weighing on your mind? Perhaps sharing your thoughts might help. That bastard's like a dog with a bone. Keeps Still, chewing on it. Keen eye, I'll give him that. He's just, well, Karen showed me something. Something I've never seen before. And that was? A sword. An odd looking thing with a single edge blade. The metal itself wasn't anything to write home about, but fuck me. The edge on it. I'd rather not. You could slice a man clean in two with a weapon like that, and he'd be halfway home before he even realized he'd been cut. <laughs> so that's what's troubling you. Nah, no, no, no. Not troubling me exactly. More distracting. Can't stop thinking. How'd you get an edge that sharp? It's driving me mad. And if you knew how to do it, we could arm the curse breakers with even better blades. That's about the size of it, yeah. I'll see what I can find out. Sharper swords are always welcome. Indeed. And we can't have our master blacksmith being distracted. Also true. Sure as soft touch, you know that. But I can't say I'm not grateful for it. Good luck, eh? Thank you. Let's see what Karen knows about this sword. Alright, Karen, I'm coming to you for two different things. I got your note. You think something's wrong with Torgal? So you can read. Congratulations. Okay, don't need to be a I didn't say asshole I was about wrong it. With him. I said some that weren't right. He's not been eating me treats. He used to love cracking the bones from Molly's boiled brown, but now he won't so much as look at him. Mm. Didn't like him. Which is why I'm of a mind that his mind's on somewhere else. You've not been working him too hard, have you? No harder than usual. Come on, bud. Is that it, boy? Do you need a rest? What was it you said he was? A frost wolf? That's what the lawsman seems to think. Then maybe this all has something to do with whatever it is that's woken inside him. I suppose things have been different since Rosaleth. Perhaps Hippocrates knows something. Instead of everything, you mean? Perhaps. <laughs> Don't you worry, bud. We will help you out with whatever you need. Also, you're looking well, Karen. What do you want? Out with it. <laughs> I want to know about the sword you showed Blackthorn. Single edged and extremely sharp. Running around after him again, are you? I suppose I am, yes. But I need to help him find out how to work an edge like that. It's driving him to distraction. Little wonder, I suppose. There's not many like that make it as far as the twins, and those that do go straight into private collections. Which made it nice and easy finding a buyer. Can you tell me who bought it? Where is it now? You think I tell people who my clients are? Suppose you're not likely to go nicking him off me, are you now? I don't Fine. sell anything. If you stop mooning at me like that. Lord Ignax, the man you want. Delmechian bloke. Collects weapons and the like. And he's got more money than sense, which is why he's one of my favourite clients. <laughs> Reckon he'll still be at the inn in Dallamil, where I left him. Thank you, Karen. Oh, and he's a touch eccentric, if you take my meaning. I appreciate the warning. I've dealt with eccentric people before. What's going on, Harpocrates? What do you know about Torgal? Tell me. I must help my Lordsman, friend. I need to ask you about Torgal. 
Something's not right with him. He isn't ill, is he? I don't think so. But according to Lady Karen, he seems to have lost his appetite. Which is certainly a new development. She says he's hardly been touching his bones of late, and she believes it may have something to do with what happened at Rosalith Castle. Hmm. I rather think she might be right, though not about his appetite. All canids are instinctively inclined to crack open bones for the rich marrow that resides within, and I see no reason why a frost wolf should be any different. Accordingly, I suspect it is not a lack of appetite that afflicts Torgal, but a surfeit of it. If we assume that his newfound magics require additional nourishment to sustain, it may well be that the bones Lady Karen is accustomed to providing are no longer sufficient. Oh, okay. Frost wolves, after all, habitually prey upon far larger animals, whose bones may yield altogether different nutrients. As to where one might find a suitable substitute, some antelopes that graze the meadows of eastern Rosaria have been known to grow to a size more than double that of their lesser cousins. Wow. I don't recall ever seeing any that large. And little wonder. The oldest and largest such creatures rarely leave the safety of the highlands for fear of predators. The last elder antelope sighting I recall hearing about took place near Cressida, and that was long before the village was abandoned. Even so, it seems like a good place to start. I was just over there. Good hunting, Clive. I don't have fond memories of Cressida. All right, goat, what you got? Clive, did you get my letter? Of course I did. That's why I'm here. Shh. Otto won't be listening. <laughs> Isra's like, what Is are you talking better? about? A little. Listen, I have some bad news. It turns out the hideaway may be slightly behind in its payment to certain lenders and it's maybe my fault damn it goat. i swear to the goddess i thought i had the numbers square sadly that square turned out to be more of a circle zero you might say i can straighten it out i swear but it's gonna take some time and i'm gonna need help keeping it from otto be late for that, I'd say. There you are! What a surprise! And about to get a whack so upside the head. Straight. You forget to pay our lenders what they're due, and instead of coming straight to me, you get Clive to come to you. And I hope he'll dig you out of the hole you've dug for yourself. Clive, the man in charge of the place you've been cheerfully trying to bankrupt. And you thought this was a cunning plan? Why? Well, who needs paying? Oh, just Martha. And the dame. And, well, Lady Karen. Oh my goodness. But only 500 talents. Each? We owe three of our most trusted friends five million gil. Each. Five million. Ugh. Each. They lent us the bulk of the money we used to rebuild the hideaway, you see, and well, I, I must have made some sort of oversight. Go, oh, you're fired. Those ledgers were my responsibility, and it was my decision to entrust them to you. This is my fault. Otto, you're too kind. I have that much to hand. I can always ask my uncle. No, we don't. And no, you won't. We've lightened Lord Rosfield's purse enough. After the King's ransom we had off him, he deserves better than to see our begging bowl. <laughs> Besides, we'll need to learn to stand on our own if we're going to make this work. All right. But that doesn't mean you have to shoulder the burden yourself. Is there anything I can do to help? There might be. How'd you fancy taking these to Martha and the Dame? Rocks. Rocks. He says, worth a thousand talents apiece, these are. Oh. A little something Sid and I set aside for when times got lean. And I reckon 15 million in overdue debt probably qualifies. I just hope our associates' eyes are a bit more discerning than yours. I'm sure they will be. Mm. 
Should be me making the rounds, really. But you know how it is with this place. Orders to bark, asses to wipe, and all that. I know. You've been wiping people's asses? Which is why I don't mind going in your place. Go. Do you know why I only gave Master Clive here two star rubies? Because you'd rather Lady Karen killed me. Yes. Because I'd rather Lady Karen killed you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God, Otto, you're the best. Well, I suppose this is goodbye then. All right, goodbye, Don't go. Don't worry. I'm sure Karen will understand. Really? Do you think so? No. No. <laughs> I don't. Oh, that's great. Some fantastic writing there. This is interesting. This will be the first time I've gotten more than three well, quests, so. That's it. Here. Sid. Reckon you might be just the man to help me out of a bit of bother. If you were mine to. Let's hear it. <laughs> well. It's about this Alembic the Chief's got me making. Alembic? Lovely bit of kit, it is. Bung in a solution, you want split in, and it will separate it out, just like that. Wait, what? The problem is, it won't always get rid of all the impurities. And with some of the stuff we need it for, that ain't good enough. Which is why I've been looking for something to filter the liquid we'll be cooking off. And that's where I was hoping you could help me out. Is this going to help my potions and high potions again? Why not? I imagine Ty could get some use out of this Alembic too. Distilling medicines and the like. All right. Why not? Proper job! So what exactly do you need for this filter? Nothing but bomb ash will do, says the chief. Oh, great. Gave me a sample she'd obtained from the university stores. Couldn't believe my eyes. You pour the blackest blight water through it, and it comes out clear as a mountain stream. So, I did a bit of reading about where I might be able to get hold of some. And do you know what I found out? It's only the blimmin' bones of a bomb king. Oh boy. They leave them behind when they die, see? I take it that's where I come in. <laughs> <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. I, I, I saw a billet on the hump board for one just the other day. Okay. I would have gone myself, but, well, fighting dirty great balls of flame isn't exactly my forte. You, on the other hand. All right. I'll see what I can do. Goodness. Thank you kindly. And, and a good hunting, eh? Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, but since I didn't prioritize it, it's still just those three. Which, to be fair, prioritizing it wouldn't really help much since I have to do a hunt to finish it. Hey, Nectar, what can you tell me about this hunt? Ask about bomb sightings. Are you on a hunt for a bomb king, Koopo? If so, I have a billet that might interest you. Bomb king. Only a rank B? Ha! <laughs> I took on a rank S. A curse breaker aiming for the Imperial Chase took a wrong turn into a nearby wood within which she discovered the ruins of a fallen airship. Within them, a beast akin to a great ball of fire that chased her screaming from the grove. The soldier later identified the creature in an almanac of echoes, but was firm in her assistance that the bomb she saw was near ten times the size of the one depicted therein. So the Croc and Sambrech. I'll probably want to go there first, just so I don't forget it. I think it might be here. Because here's the Imperial Chase. So, jump to the Dragon's Airy. Oh, I guess this was closed off before. Ah, yes, and there's the Croc. A place called Heaven Hall down here. Oh, got a chest back here. Some black blood. Yeah, I'm guessing this Heaven Hall place is going to be important, probably at some point. Alright, I've come to take you down, Bomb King. Two sprigs of valley matter. Time to die. Yeah, yeah, you're big and scary. I'm so scared. Oh no, don't hurt me, please. 
of here. Greetings, Your Majesty. Get out of the fire, please. Oh, okay. Stunned him. Uh-oh. Oh, no. There are more of them now. <laughs> Okay, I'm about to die. My goodness that thing turned real ugly real fast but I did it I killed him and I got a bomb ember Whew. your reign is over now to collect the ash this looks like the stuff let's see if there's any more maybe some right here And a little more right here. That should do it. There we go. If a wine needs more than this, he can fetch it himself. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, How you doing, Isabel? It's been a while since I've seen you. My lady, I come bearing gifts. Gifts? Whatever is the occasion. Here's a star ruby. Oh my. Clive, you really have outdone yourself. Otto asked me to give it to you. To settle the hideaway's dead with the veil. And to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. <laughs> Tell Otto he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. The first man time. owes me nothing, nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. It was the least I could do. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake. And for Otto's. For all of us. For all you've done. <sighs> It is rather fetching, isn't it? Very well. <laughs> Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. But you and the others at the hideaway, 
are the closest thing he has to family. I didn't what realize he had son? a... Yeah, that's new. Long ago, yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy. Oh, damn. And blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened. Whether there was anything he could have done. But it was clear that it weighed heavily on him. I didn't know. How could you have? I doubt anyone did. Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit, given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. Very true. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that. All right, well, that's done. Give my regards to Otto and tell him I do so miss his visits. I will indeed. People take notice of wealthy men. Shouldn't be too hard to track down Karen's collector. Very true. Back again, are you? Any more trouble and you'll be barred for life, however deep your friend's pockets might be. Okay. Oh, Mother Crystal, gone. You. you. What are we going to do? Listen. I, I've got this theory. The fallen tremor. I don't think they all fell. Okay. Some of them are still. I'm just gonna walk away now. You could be one of them. That, that guy's been drinking a little too much. My reputation will be ruined. Ruined. Calm yourself, Lord Ignac. I beg of you, before you do yourself a mischief. What's going on? On the intrusion, but... Out! Get out! I paid for these rooms so I wouldn't be disturbed. Leave me be! Please, allow me to apologize. His lordship is going through a difficult time, and he's never been fond of guests arriving unannounced. Radim! Get rid of the filthy oath this instant! Very good, Lord Ignac. Would you mind stepping outside for a moment? Ah, uh, eccentric indeed. I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. That? No, no, no. That's just how his lordship is. Though the morning's events have left him somewhat fractious. He has been dispossessed of his luggage, you see. The thieves also made away with a considerable amount of coin. Coin the innkeeper will soon be keen to collect. Well, I just so happen to know somebody. A blade was among the stolen items. Who could a single get edged that sword. Back. It was purchased from a merchant friend of mine. Ah, you know Lady Karen? Yes, I'm afraid it was. Then I'll retrieve Lord Ignac's luggage. But I have one condition. You are but to state it. You are welcome to anything that is within my power to grant. I want an audience with Lord Ignac. A few minutes should be enough. Then I'll be on my way. A condition I would be a fool to refuse. Of course, you shall have your audience. Excellent. I don't suppose you saw where the thieves went. I did not, no. Though some discreet inquiries made on his lordship's behalf mean that I know where you might find them. The bandit's bed. Every ill-gotten coin in Dalamal is said to pass through that disreputable corner of the Valcroy. I remember that's seeing it before. I shall speak to Lord Ignac in your absence, and arrange for an audience upon your triumphant return. That will be very kind of you. Farewell, and best of luck. Thank you very much, sir. Hey, you guys, did you steal something you shouldn't have? We've got company. Come on, lads, oh. let's tear the bastard's head off. Let's try. Ugh! <laughs> 
and thank you for playing. Oh, that was a... <laughs> that's a disgusting. <laughs> oh, I don't even know how to recreate that noise that he just made. This must be Ignac's luggage. Nothing seems to be damaged. All right. Let's get it back to Delamel. And how did we manage to do that with just me and Torgal? I hear I have you to thank for the return of my effects. What shall I call you, my good man? Wyvern. Glad mm -hmm. to make your acquaintance. A formidable name indeed. Well, Wyvern, I appear to be in your debt. Redeem here tells me you wished for an audience. Is that all? A few moments of your time should suffice, yes. You're a peculiar fellow, Wyvern. All right, speak. A master Wyvern was wondering if you could tell him about a certain single-edged sword you recently acquired. Oh, a true work of art, that one. Karen drove me hard on the price, but I would have sold her Radim here to get my hands on that sword. <laughs> it was made in the Outer Isles, far beyond the Twins, and is used exclusively by the practitioners of a unique school of swordsmanship. Interesting. They believe no combat should ever exceed a single strike and hone their blades to such perfection that none ever does. Each sword is made for that one perfect stroke, and for that stroke only. They crack upon a second blow. Ah. Uh, There's a brutal sort of beauty to it, really. Um, How do they hone such an edge? Not really that useful for me. <laughs> Fine question. Why, they use a whetstone, of course. Whetstones, rather. A whole array of them, ranging from the coarse to the fine. Ten thousand licks with the sharpening stone, then ten thousand more. But it is the final stone which lends the blade its legendary sharpness. A mineral quite foreign to this great realm of ours. And that is the key. The secret ingredient. Why, when it occurs to me that my little lecture is hardly equal to services rendered, take this, together with my regards. The very stone of which I spoke, far wow. rarer among collectors than even the blade itself. Well, thank you. And a far more fitting payment. Thank you. Pardon the intrusion, my lordship. However, it is long past time we prepared ourselves to depart. So it is. I am locked in bitter competition with a rival collector of curiosities. I am one step ahead of the unscrupulous scoundrel, but he is hard at my heels. And there are many other collectors out there. Too many to count, but only one do I consider my nemesis, <laughs> Lord Byron Rosfield. Oh, uh, that's fantastic. And perennial thorn in my side. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Farewell, Wyvern. May our paths cross again. Thank goodness I didn't give my real name. We mustn't dawdle. I think his lordship is rather taken with you, Master Wyvern. Thank you again for your assistance. It's the least I could do. Coming, my lordship. I'll be right there. Trust Uncle Byron to find such an interesting rival. <laughs> now, let's see what Blackthorn makes of this whetstone, shall we? Before we get to that, though, over to Martha's Rest. All right, Martha, I'm here to settle debts. Clive, we weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here, <laughs> but it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. Take the star, Ruby. A 
star, Ruby. I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. <laughs> interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever <laughs> borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway's still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Mm. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. That Otto would just give up. His death was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. And rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all... Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. <laughs> that, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. Interesting. It's really cool that we're learning a bit more oh, about Otto. Stones were delivered. If he's still with us. <laughs> he's still... God, that's hilarious. Yeah, I really like what we've been learning about Otto, though. In this one, I feel like it's been a good, uh, it's been good to just hear some more about who he was before he came to the hideaway and such. I wonder if his son's gonna play it all in the main story, or if that's just a random bit of side information that deepens his character a little bit. Well, here are some antelopes. They don't seem that much bigger. Find one bigger than that. Oh, I guess they are. Ow. Okay. Problem. Well, I mean, little problem. They did. They did hit me a little bit. Not too bad overall, though. All right, eat up, boy. No. Will it be enough? I wonder. <gasps> He's so happy. <laughs> this is adorable. I say that answers my question, which means we owe the lawsmen our thanks. You're just a big puppy, aren't you? <laughs> a very big puppy. Indeed he is. <laughs> you do know you can take that with you, Togol. Lady Karen will be relieved to hear you've got your appetite back. Come on, boy. Adorable. Give you a little pet. All right, boy. Okay. All right, time to finish up these side quests, and then we will call it a night, starting with Karen. I noticed you and Togel had gone off somewhere. Took him for a walk, did you? <laughs> you could say that. 
And so we killed some antelope and then he ate it and he was happy and he wagged his tail and I petted him and it was adorable. So, Molly's leftovers weren't good enough, eh? That'll teach me for treating you like you're still a pup. <laughs> all right, all right, no need to shout. Now we know what you're after, I can see about getting some in. Speaking of which, I brought one for later. Can I leave it with you? There you go. That's five, Clive. Not one. You can, eh? I'm nice like that. In return, you can thank Tomes for me. The bloody know-it-all. I was just on my way to see him. <laughs> Seems like Karen and Tomes are like, I don't know, two sides of the same coin almost. Sorry for the wait, but hopefully you'll agree it was worth it. You learned something about that sort then? I did better than that. Take this whetstone. Whetstone. Yes. But not one you'll find anywhere in Valisthea. So this is how they make the swords and then they break after one hit. Pretty useless, right? No wonder I couldn't get a same finish on the grinding wheel. <laughs> one hit and all done, eh? Might not be so bad if all you ever fought were duels. <sighs> Good luck on the battlefield. Your second opponent would be your last, no matter how good you were. Even so, is there some way it could be used to give the Curse Breakers an edge? I think so, yeah. With this whetstone and the right kind of steel, I could probably even make a twin of the plate that rattled me. But there'd be no replacing this little rock once I worn it down to a sliver. I reckon we get a dozen swords from it, if that. Well, oh, damn. Swords that the Curse Breakers wouldn't know how to wield, probably, and that would see them through a single fire piece. Nah, no point trying to copy that thing. Be about as much use as a wax anvil. But finishing our blades with a whetstone is fine. Now that's something to consider. And what's finer than fallen masonry, eh? Or more hard wearing for that matter. Hmm. Just imagine it. Good Valisthean steel with an edge as sharp as any found in the Outer Isles. I won't make a copy, nah. I'll make something much better. I like I'm the sound sure of that. The curse breakers will be delighted. Just don't push yourself too hard. <laughs> don't you worry about me, sunshine. I'll be working day and night since I was half your age, and I'll still be here when you're long gone. <laughs> hey, thanks, Clive. I mean it. I owe you one, August too. It's good to know someone's looking out for me. Always. You'll be happy to hear you said that. And I'll see that my debt to you's paid. First new blade I make's got your name on it. Nice. You come and find me when you've got the materials. Hopefully right. I do. I will. I've already gotten some materials from some of the, uh, the hunts that I've done. Blacksmith Blues 2. Excalibur design draft. That doesn't have my name on it, though, Blackthorn. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Excalibur recipe unlocked. Let's check it out. What do you need? I'm saying for you, dear. I can make it. So 18 more and 33. Oh, yes. But yeah. Okay, so Bomb Ember and Grimal can hide. I needed both of those for this. Not bad. If Very nice. So Let me check for the Diamond Sword plus two. Yeah, it's even better than that. Sweet. Well, time to see what Excalibur looks like. Let's see if I maybe want to have the look. You know, it's not bad. I'll, I'll have it equipped as the look for a little bit, just to see. I might have to switch Clive back to his original outfit, though, because I think it would probably look better than the current one I have on with this. Ah, Clive. Were you able to locate your quarry? We were indeed, Lawsman. You pointed us in exactly the right direction. And Torgal's been a very happy hound ever since. Very good, very good. Lady Karen sends her thanks, by the way, for your part in solving the mystery. Ah, but that reminds me. After your last visit, I found myself pondering Torgal's talents. Really? 
Do you recall our conversation concerning Lady Jill's role in Torgal's transformation? Yes. About how she somehow woke the power within him. Precisely that. A reasonable conclusion, I thought. But one which raised certain questions in my mind. You see, the Fenrir of legend served Shiva and Shiva alone. And while the powers attributed to him are certainly impressive, the records imply they are somewhat different in nature to those you describe Torgal as having used. What are you suggesting? That Torgal may be the beneficiary of more than one icon's power. Oh. Consider that in addition to Lady Jill, he has served as a loyal companion to you, your brother, and even the late Sid. In short, the icons hitherto near at hand, or should I say at poor, have been diverse and plenty. And that number has only grown as the realm's dominance have fallen to your sword. One can but speculate as to how all of this has affected Torgal. He has seemed more fierce of late. And if I am not mistaken, he will grow fiercer still. We are fortunate indeed to be able to count him amongst our allies and not our adversaries. <laughs> oh, he's more than an ally. He's a friend. That's right. Good boy. Own to pick. Cavill's Fang. What? Slightly increases Torgal's attack potency. Man, that's cool, but I don't know if I want to get rid of the other accessories. Also, I realized... I know I can't level up with him. something I might assist you yeah. with, Clive? I forgot I haven't talked to him in a little while. I have said it many times. Hugo Kupka was a murderer, but he was also a thief. A thief who robbed us of our happiness, of our hope. And though I know it was wrong to revel in the death of another, we can take solace in the fact that he will never steal anything from us ever again. His story is ended. Thank you, Clive. You're very welcome. Were you aware... That in many cities, bearers are forbidden from having children. Tis believed that the ether used to bring a child into the world hastens the crystal's curse lessening the mother's productivity. Such is the world we live in. Fortunately, Tet and Crow's parents were able to escape that world, only for a few brief summers. But what of the twins themselves? Born in the hideaway, one touched by magic, the other spared its burden. Their minds are blissfully untainted by the poisonous rhetoric of priests and politicians. They will grow up knowing there is no difference between a man and bearer. They will pass that truth on to their own children, and they to theirs. Though the world we live in now is but a footnote in the annals of history. Yes, change will come. And through a magic which requires no crystal or conjure. One that will endure long after the last mother crystal has fallen. It's a good way to look you at know, it, Harpocrates. I sometimes forget that the study of history can have practical benefits. Do thank Mid for reminding me of that. Sure thing. Alright, you weirdo. Got your bomb ash. Oh, wait there, Sid. How's that hunt for the bomb ash going? I have it here. It was hell to get. Literally, there's so much fire around. That's the stuff. And plenty of it, too. Enough to keep the Olympic bubbling away for a good old while. You're a gent, Sid. Let nothing say otherwise. Right then. Let's get this contraption up and running. Yeah, I wonder if this is going to help increase the efficiency of my potions and high potions again. If so, that would be nice. I think I've gotten to a point now where... Some time later. There we have it. The Telemon Malembic. And it works just like the Chief said it would. <sighs> Very impressive. <laughs> Says the man who cut down a burning boulder. Speaking of which, I still haven't returned a favor. There's no need. The good it will do for the hideaway is reward enough. I suppose. Don't be silly. Why do you let me take a look at that bag of yours? The one you keep your potions in. Reckon I can work some magic on that. Huh? Are you about what to increase kind of magic? how many I can hold? Well. We happen to have isolated a substance in our test run of the Alembic.
that I reckon will make even the toughest lever supple as anything. Thought we might use it to breathe new life into old boots and the like. Save the hideaway a few, Gil. Ah, I reckon if we slap a bit on your bag, it'll loosen up enough for you to squeeze in a bottle or two more. Yes. Well, it can't hurt to try, I suppose. That's the spirit. Leave it with me. I'll only be a mo. You know what? You're a little weird, but Wayne, you might have just done the best thing in this game so far. I, I did have the thought if I'd be able to hold more. And here we are. Well, what do you reckon? It certainly feels more of flexible. Right? Told you. Thank you. I think. <laughs> no, no. Thank you for supporting Mid and the rest of us in our endeavors. Without you, we'd never have been able to discover wonders like that stuff I rubbed on your bag. Fair enough. And I'm telling you, there's plenty more where that came from. Why'd you have to say it like that? Quest complete. Weird science. And treated satchel. Treated potion satchel. Necessary for increasing consumable in inventory capacity. Yes. Inventory increased. So I wonder how much it increases it. You've obtained a treated potion satchel, hereby increasing your capacity for carrying consumables. Item slot increases are as follows. 4 to 6 on potions, 3 to 4 on high potions, and then 2 to 3 for the tonics. Because I would say 1 high potion or 2 potions at this point is basically close to a full heal. So that's 2 more full heals that I can carry around now. That's epic. It would be great if I get down here and it's just a totally new guy with the name goat over his head. Like, yes, hello, I'm the new goat now. The old one died. Goat. Still alive, I see. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah, oh, about that. Uh, I tried my best, but she was just too stubborn to take it. <laughs> she threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Karen refused payment. All of them did. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you were as tactful as ever. Let me see what I can do. Oh, wonderful. I hope you have better luck than I did. All right. Well, actually, Desiree. Welcome to the patron's whisper. Is Got everything the next one? we've received and everything promised? A light from the heavens. The goddess Grieger teaches us that to walk with the wretched is an act of greater good. If we are to accept this truth, then one could not rightly call he who follows this path an outlaw. A humble servant. High cleric's medallion. What is that? Why can I not? Thank you. All yours. I'll have to check luck, that one out real quick. Also, I went ahead and checked, and he is now a lading looser, I guess. I don't, I don't know exactly what that means, but... He's, he's moved up another pedigree, like the good boy that he is. Increase healing potency of high potions by 25%. You know, that's not too bad, but I don't I don't know what I would get rid of, though. Again, having these two on here are just too important. It would be great if they gave me the ability to wear more than three accessories, because I feel like they keep giving me good accessories that I can't use, because I want to keep those three on. They told me she was building a ship. Look at how happy Torgal is now. Good boy. All right, Karen, take the payment. Thank you, old Karen, woman. Go tells me you weren't happy with our offer. Would you prefer the debt was repaid in coin? What debt? I don't recall lending any of you lot me hard-earned gill. <laughs> I may have tossed a talent or two in the Hardaway's coffers, but those were donations, and you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course not. But one good turn deserves another. And our circumstances have changed. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest whether you like it or not. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Where'd you even get this? A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. 
A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself and ask twice as much. <laughs> might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. A fine continental maid whose beauty is only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You wouldn't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. <laughs> Alright, I did it. I hear you ended up delivering all three stones. Thanks to this lump. I sometimes wonder what I pay you for. <laughs> Speaking of which, I, uh... Um, I, Go. Uh, I still haven't been paid now is last not month's wages. The time. Oh! So you remember what's owed to you, then? Get your ass beyond that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledges are square. Right away. <laughs> I've seen that before. You yeah, have, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used. Either out of habit, or because the filthy sod couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. Like most people. Martha and the Dame both seem to have fond memories of him. <laughs> I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died? Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day, I was a purser on a trade ship. Which is where I met him. He bought passage to, I oh, forget where. And having nothing better to do on the long nights, we set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. Quit my post not long after that. On account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But mm. me and Sid stayed close. Promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was before fate stepped in. And said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first name day. And oh. there was no hiding his neck. Damn. Couldn't you and your family have? My family were the ones who summoned the constable. Wow. Like a monster taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him. Forget what I felt. And I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily, Sid was of the same mind as me. It was him who stood beside me when all I wanted was to tear the whole world down. Him who cried for me when I had no tears left of my own. Mm. Him who swore he'd do everything he could to stop it from happening again. And he was true to his word, too. Left the royal army once and for all. His ranks, his ribbons, gone. Just like that. Threw away everything he had. All to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face. I knew then I'd follow that man to the ends of the earth. Oh, we even got a little cutscene out of this. He was always too clever for his own good, was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was, while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. And it can't have been easy, bearing that burden alone. stop him he never lost faith in what he believed was right and that gave us <laughs> faith in him faith he'd steer us true so I swore on myself that I'd always be right behind him ready to catch the stubborn sod if ever he should fall even do that
Ignore me. Just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave that lot. I'll tidy it up in a bit. This. This is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto. I may be drunk, but I wanted you to know this place would be fucked without you. Love you, you old grumpy old sod. <laughs> this note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. You should have bloody well said so then. Just once. Before he went. But then, why would he, him, or anyone? I'd only have told him to piss off. You're wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction. I uh, barely seem to be able to do that anymore. <laughs> Would you rather go where the helm? <laughs> well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. Before you go... Sid would have wanted you to have this. Uh, is that going to go on the wall of memories? Like that. This will do me just fine. Hmm. Thanks. For the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have. Hmm. This was awesome. This is my favorite side quest so far. Hey back. Yep, we got Sid's goblet. Where Otto Sid never once washed his goblet despite using it every day for both wine and small beer. You know, I, I cannot do anything close to a Sid impression. I I have tried, so I'm just I'm not even gonna try to read that quote from him. Okay, well let's look at the wall of memories and check out Sid's goblet. Miraculously undamaged in the attack on the old hideaway, Otto held on to the featureless clay cup to remind him of his lost friend before giving it to Clive, knowing that Sid would have wanted the proud bearer of his legacy to have it. Very sweet. Alright, well with that, I will go ahead and call it here for the night. I know we didn't do a whole lot of main quest stuff. It was mostly just fetch quests or mid as far as the main story is concerned. But still very fun episode. Some fun hunts, one very difficult battle for sure. But a couple of really good side quests and again, just that last one, learning a bit more about Otto, having those moments with him, it really shows they've done a great job with characterizing some of these, even just the side characters. It's been really cool to see just how they fleshed out the characters in this game so far, and I can't wait to see what they do with it next. There's still a concern that a lot of these guys might not survive to the end, because, I mean, this game has shown, a, again, a willingness to kill off a lot of <laughs> a lot of the characters involved. But overall, I'm having a great time, and I hope you guys are too. If you are, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. It lets me know that you guys are enjoying this series, as well as check out the channel. I've got another Let's Play series, as well as a bunch of reviews to look at. But until next time, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.